Hi guys, uh, greetings of the day. Please welcome back to my YouTube channel. Myself, Professor Vijita Vardhan. And I'm going to teach you today in this session a projection of solids, an example problem on pentagonal pyramid, which is going to be solved in your grid books. So now this is a pentagonal pyramid. You can see the base shape is pentagon and this is a pyramid. That's why it is called as a pentagonal pyramid. This is one of the regular solid. So let us consider an example problem and let me show you how to do it in your booklets. Now an example problem is like this. A pentagonal pyramid 25 millimeter sides of base and 50 millimeter axis strengths rests on HP on one of its corners such that the two base edges containing the corner on which it rests make equal inclination with HP. Draw the projection of the pyramid when the axis of the pyramid is inclined to HP at 45 de 40 degree and appears to be inclined to VP at 45, 45 degree. Okay, uh, now you can see this is a pentagonal pyramid. Now the base edge size is 25 millimeter and the height of the solid is uh, 50 millimeter. And please make sure that uh, the pentagon you are going to construct in the top view and the front view is going to be a triangle. Okay, now you can see that I'm going to position it with respect to the corner resting where I'm going to rotate in the clockwise direction. Now, when it is going to be a corner resting, the axis is inclined to HP at 40 degree as per the given condition. And then it is going to be rotated with respect to VP at an angle of 45 degree. So this is how the front and top use it is going to be projected. So now let me show you how to solve it in your booklets. Now to start with the construction of pentagon with respect to the corner resting, the procedure is here. So one has to draw the constructional line, which is going to be drawn like this, with respect to the x, y line, draw a perpendicular line like this as shown. Now, after drawing this line, so using your HB pencils, using your HB pencils, draw a constructional line, sorry, uh, draw a 25 millimeter side length like this. And after drawing this 25 millimeter side length, then what is the next thing we are supposed to do? Let me show it to you guys. Now, after drawing this 25 millimeter line, so using your protractor, keep the protractor at this position and then measure 72 degree as an exterior angle like this. And then using this point as a reference, once again, using the protractor, and again, measure 72 degree and draw these two constructional lines like this, okay? And after which, using your compass and setting the radius value equal to the side length of 25 millimeter. And then you are supposed to keep the center of the compass at this position and draw a constructional arc like this. And repeat the same procedure on the other end of the line what you have constructed. And then draw an arc like this. After which, without changing the radius in the compass, keep the compass at this position as shown in the video over there. And then draw a constructional arc like this. And keeping that another point what you have created, then again, without changing the radius, we are supposed to draw one more arc like this. Then using your HB pencils without any hesitation, you can complete this pentagonal edges properly like this. So one can say that the construction of the pentagon with respect to the corner resting is completed. And to complete the top view properly by drawing the slant edges, we have to do a small construction lines. Let me show you what is the construction lines. Now, from this point, join a line to the opposite line midpoint. That is nothing but the perpendicular bisectors. Like this, you are supposed to draw any two perpendicular bisectors out of five. And then, with the help of the intersection of these perpendicular bisectors, wherever it is going to meet, from there, you are supposed to connect each and every slant edges as I am going to connect it and show it in the video over here. Now, this is what the required top view of the pentagonal pyramid. Now, let me complete the annotation paths and the dimension. 
and the required projectors to draw the front view. Now you can see that I have completed the annotation part as well as the dimensioning and I have drawn all the required projectors. And after which, uh, sorry, I have forgotten to name the axis position. Now let me complete the axis position naming O and O1, okay. Now after identifying the axis position, we have to draw the height of the axis, which is as given in the question as 50 millimeter. That is nothing but measure five boxes in your grid book. And after measuring five boxes in the grid book, now taking your pencil, mark this point as the apex position as O dash or vertex position as O dash. And then using your HB pencils, complete the boundary. What is the boundary B dash A dash to O dash, which is a slant triangular face and then a slant edge O dash D dash and then the base A dash to B dash, B dash to O dash up to E dash, we are going to complete it. And then the visible slant edge, we have to connect it. Now this completes the required front view as per the given conditions. Now after drawing the first stage that is top and front views, we know that the axis is inclined to HP at an angle of 40 degree, but straight away the construction of axis is quite difficult. Henceforth, we are going to rotate a base at an angle of 90 minus given angle axis inclination that is 90 minus theta. Now 90 minus 40 will be the 50 that is, we are supposed to rotate the base at an angle of 50 degree, then obviously the axis will be rotated at an angle of for 40 degree because you can see that the axis and the base are mutually perpendicular to each other. And now, once we are going to decide that we are going to rotate the solid in the clockwise direction, it is going to rest on the corner D dash as per the initial position what we have constructed. Now, locate the corner D dash at a sufficient position, keeping some convenient distance with respect to the X, Y line and then keep a protractor at D dash <coughs> and then measure 50 degree in the clockwise direction. Measure 50 degree in the clockwise direction and draw this constructional line. And after which using the compass, take D dash as the center and B dash as the radius. I repeat, D dash as the center, B dash as the radius now keep the compass at D dash, that is a new position in second stage. And without changing the radius, we are supposed to draw an arc on the 50 degree clockwise direction, what we have measured. And that point we are going to mark it as B dash as well as A dash. Now in the same fashion, we have to get the position of the apex or vertex for which again using the compass, measure the distance between B dash and a dash using the compass and then with B dash and A dash as the center in the second stage without changing the radius we are supposed to draw a constructional arc like this and in the same fashion once again using the same compass now with O dash as the center B dash as the radius you take this measurement and then with D dash in the second stage and without changing the radius, we'll draw one more constructional arc like this. Now the intersection point is going to be treated as O dash. Now let me complete the front view as are the 40 degree. Now you guys can see that I have completed the front view at an angle of 40 degree. Now to show that the axis is inclined at an angle of 40 degree, now keep the scale parallel to O dash and O1 dash and extend that line towards the XY line like this. Then using your drawing instruments, that is pencil, you are supposed to show that this axis inclination is 40 degree. But never show that the base is inclined at 50 degree. That is a construction what we have done. But in the question, it is given as 40 degree. So you are to supposed to show that axis is inclined to HP at 40 degree. After which we have to draw the top view. To draw the top view, we have to draw the projectors from both the stages. Now I'm going to draw one of the vertical projector of the apex and the vertical horizontal projector of the apex also I'm going to draw now. Now the intersection point is going to be treated as O. In the same fashion, we have to complain 
all other remaining projectors. Now let me complete the same. Now you can see that I have completed all the projectors which is required for this problem. And now we are supposed to apply the rules of visibility. According to the rules of visibility, first we should complete the boundary lines. Now let me complete what is a boundary line connecting A to B, then followed by C, then followed by O, then followed by E, and up to A is going to be the boundary line. And then we have to identify whether the base is visible or invisible. When the object is seen from the top, obviously the base is away from the observer when compared to the apex position. Henceforth, the base is invisible. Hence, the base edges must be shown as invisible edges, that is E to D and D to C must be shown as invisible. However, AE, AB, AC forms the boundary, even though it is a invisible since it is a boundary, hence it cannot be shown as invisible edges. And afterwards, such of the slant edges, either partially or completely passing inside this invisible base are visible and vice versa. So according to this concept, the slant edge OA as well as OB is going to be shown as visible. And OD is going to be shown as invisible edge because it is connected to the invisible base completely. <coughs> and afterwards, we are supposed to make sure that we are supposed to draw an axis line from O1 to O1. Now this completes the second stage top view. And afterwards, we know that in the question it is clearly given that axis is, appears to be inclined to VP at 45 degree. Even though the length of the axis is getting reduced. So now you can see that I'm measuring the dimension. The length of the axis is getting reduced, but the given angle is also the apparent angle. Henceforth, one need not to construct the angle beta. The given angle is beta itself. This is not the true angle, guys. So you should not construct the apparent angle because it is getting reduced. That is the axis length is getting reduced but the apparent angle is given directly. So we have to go straight away. Now, using your pencil and scale, draw a constructional line, which is, okay, uh, here a constructional line is not necessary. Otherwise, if you are required, you can, yes, you can draw a constructional line, which is parallel to the XY line like this. And after drawing this constructional line, then, from this point, measure a 45 degree line. Measure a 45 degree line and draw a constructional line that is nothing but the apparent angle line is supposed to be drawn like this. And after drawing this 45 degree line, you are supposed to transfer the points of O and O1. Now, how do you transfer the points O and O1? Let me show you. Now, using your pencil, locate a point anywhere on this 45 degree line what you have constructed. And after locating a point over there, then what is the thing we are supposed to do is using the compass, measure the distance between O and O1 in the second stage top view using the compass. And then with this point as O1 as the center, then without changing the radius what you have measured in the second stage top view, then you are supposed to draw an arc over there, then locate a point for a reference. Now, using pencil, mark this point as O1 and this point as O. Now, using the compass, measure the different positions, that is A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, let me show you one of the point. Now, using the compass, measure O1 and A. Using the compass, measure O1 and A with O1 as the center over here, then without changing the radius we are supposed to draw a constructional arc and afterwards measure the distance of a using o now then using the compass we are measuring that distance that is o to a is going to be measured with o as the center without changing the radius we are going to draw a constructional arc over here now the intersection point will be treated as a in the same fashion we have to reconstruct the same image at an angle of 45 degree that is at an angle of beta we are supposed to complete this solution. Now let me complete the same. 
Now you guys can see that I have reconstructed the same image at an angle of 45 degrees. And afterwards, to get the front view, we are supposed to complete the projectors. Now let me draw one of the projectors for the apex like this. The horizontal and vertical projectors both has to be drawn. And the intersection is going to be marked as the apex position O. In the same fashion, we have to draw all the remaining projectors. Now you guys can see that I have completed all the projectors, which is similar to the apex. And then using your HB pencils, according to the rules of visibility, we are supposed to complete the boundary lines first. Starting with A dash, we'll connect it to O dash as a boundary. And then whether it is C dash or D dash, yes, C dash is going to be the boundary followed by D dash, then E dash, and then A dash. And after which we have to identify whether the base is visible or not. Now, when we are seeing the object from the front, the base is nearer to the observer when compared to the apex position, which is as constructed in the figure. Henceforth, the base is visible. Hence, make the base edges as visible edges, that is A to B, A to B, then B to C are supposed to be made as visible. Now, the slant edges either partially or completely passing inside this visible base are invisible, which are those that is O dash, E dash and O dash, D dash is going to be the invisible and which passes outside is always visible. So according to the third rule, we are going to complete it. And rest of the two slant edges forms the boundary. And at last, but not the least, using your two hedge pencils, using the scale and drawing instruments, make sure that you are going to connect the axis position O dash and O1 dash. Now this completes the problem in all aspects as per the given conditions. Now you can please contact me if you are having any sort of doubts in the contact details which is provided over here. And if you are not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please, please, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel and also like this video and share this to all your first year engineering students. And thank you for watching this video in my YouTube channel. Once again, thank you very much guys.